Welcome back to Dirt to Daytona. Today, we take on Texas Motor Speedway. Folks, last week we raced at Dover and it ended up being a fine race. Top 10 finish. We screwed up, which is why we deserve the top 10. We probably could have gotten the top three if we didn't screw up, but that's beyond. Well, that's not beside the point. That is the whole point. We screwed up. However, we also didn't get any of our bonuses at the end of the race because this stupid game sometimes does that, and therefore we lost money. Even though we had a top 10 finish, we freaking lost money. So I'm a little upset about that still, especially since I recorded that episode about four and a half minutes ago. But on to Texas where we should have a convincing win. Does that mean you guys just skip ahead? No, don't do that now. You never know what happens in the middle of the race. Also, maybe the music is good and you just want to listen to it. I don't know, but what I'm trying to tell you is stick around and check this one out. We'll see you at qualifying. Well, we're not as fast as Matt Crafton. Uh, we're faster than everybody else. I don't know. All right. So we also totally changed the truck setup from what we were practicing with. Should probably have this open just to see. Yeah, we're redlining it now. I don't know. How well that's going to go for us overall. I'm going to have to drop the final gear a little bit. Mm, probably. Judging by the creeping temperature and that we aren't really ever on the brakes, therefore the temperature is just going to continue to creep up. This is fine for now. But um, see where we ended up there. That's not even as good as we were doing with the other setup. So we will adjust in happy hour and be ready for the race in just a moment all you're gonna see is where we end up here which should be second and then which sucks because we lost that money again should have been first but i i mean we at our best were two tenths off of that speed so that sucks i'll adjust the gear ratios a little bit give us a little more top end and then see where we end up with that i i hope that works Welcome to Fort Worth and the Texas Motor Speedway. It's seating for over 150,000 fans. This motorsports haven represents racing at its finest. Recently repaved, this quad-shaped oval with 24-degree banking has become one of NASCAR's fastest tracks. I don't think I uh, ever did the pavement on this. Oh, I had to have. There's no way that I didn't. I mean, it looks pretty good. I don't actually know if I have, come to think of it. Because I... The seams are... So when you do the texture stuff, the seams are actually at the edge of the texture, which I didn't realize, which is why one of the tracks that I did had seams and it doesn't anymore. But, um... It's interesting. This, uh, this surface looks pretty good without being changed to the high textures, high quality textures. We can make it better. We can make it all better. Maybe someday. Like, I don't know. A long time from now when I've got a million subscribers and we decide to revisit this, but every truck is sponsored by a subscriber and we do all that fun stuff. There's so much room for content for me to do in this genre. I love it. I will absolutely always have a racing series going on on this channel. Now, does that mean that it's the only thing I'll have going on on this channel? Probably not. We'll see. I might dedicate this to just this, but I really do. I'm looking forward to maximum football coming out. And then of course, in 2024, we've got EA Sports college football coming out as well. Um, huge football fan. I love playing baseball in video games. Uh, so that's a thing. In fact, actually, we're going to... I'm going with my family next Sunday to the Donald Driver. I don't know if you know who that is. You know, those of you from the Midwest probably do. He was a Packer all-star receiver, all-pro, all-amazing. Huge still in the community. He has a charity softball game every year. Tickets are pricey, but my wife's work got them for... Uh, heavy discount so we actually have like second row seats behind the players uh dugout which will be a lot of fun 
We do that next Sunday. Then the following Sunday, my son, who have I've never said before, I'm, I am extraordinarily proud of. He um, graduated college, valedictorian, and then went on to start his career. And he is currently... Um, he get his company is having a trip to a Brewers game. And we're all going to that as well. Me, my wife, him, and my daughter are all going to that game as well. So a couple baseball games. Love to go to baseball games. Love to play baseball. Cannot stand watching baseball on TV. Just not enjoyable for me to watch it on TV. Um, similarly, golf. I love golfing because I love to be out in the nature it's, you know quiet it's well groomed unless you're at a shit golf course i'm not good at all i i'm but i love doing it you know it's a lot of fun and you live for those we it's funny at one time me and my buddy that are frequent well we're frequent golfers together we just went again well by the time this comes out about a week ago but uh we just went and it was funny because we were telling some of the guys that we let start before us because they came right up behind us and we we're like you guys go first and it was because well we hadn't golfed in something like seven years but prior to that we golfed enough if you've ever golfed you can probably understand this we golfed enough to be upset when we were not golfing decent now we're just happy to be out there and enjoying ourselves on the uh on the golf course couldn't watch golf on tv to save my life if i wanted to take a nap i could watch golf love playing tennis wouldn't really watch tennis well i used to get into watching tennis on tv it is pretty impressive uh think about other things hockey oh my goodness put me at a hockey game any day of the week that is a blast i don't care if it's amateur or pro hockey does not matter what a blast to go to on tv uh not not great for me football i'm a psycho about put me at a game put me at home put me at a bar i don't care i'll be at a full i'll watch a football game i love football basketball college basketball is my gig i love watching college basketball these guys are putting it all out there for potential future paychecks but they're not getting paid today so they're really just doing it all for the future and you see a lot more team play and a lot less hot shot play and better defense and things like that and of course the big tournaments fantastic so i do watch and i do keep up with the the nba but it's just not anything that's super fantastic in my brain place um especially if the bucks are out i was a 90s bulls fan of course michael jordan in the 90s but i'm from wisconsin so i'll always rep my home team Lived in North Carolina. You guys have heard that if you've watched the series. So when I lived out there, met a bunch of the Panther players at a bar called Boardwalk Billy's. If you're all from Charlotte University area, we used to go there on Monday nights to watch uh, the Monday night football game. And they would come out there. This is in the early 2000s. And so uh, I've had some interesting interactions with some and then some very great interactions with others. Steve Smith did try to take the girl I came with um, away, but she wasn't with the, me as a girlfriend. <laughs> she was just my buddy's girlfriend, and he wasn't there that night, and so that was interesting. Uh, obviously, 20-plus years ago, so he is quite a different human being now, I should assume. He was like a second- or third-year player at the time. Uh, anyway, though, was not a Panther fan until I met... A number of the players and so therefore i am now a panther fan uh just great great dudes all around we're very they got me out of that steve smith situation which was cool of them and also just we're really chill human beings and i loved it so for you know forever a panther fan as well people say how can you be a fan of the panthers and the packers and i can just simply tell you i dislike a lot less teams than i like in the nfl um this year, I'll watch the Jets play. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers was a fan of his. Uh, so I'll watch the Jets play and root for their success. Of course, Green Bay, Jordan Love, hoping for a strong set. I mean, I think that really, not that anybody asked, but hey, you're watching this video, so listen. 
But I think that uh, Green Bay's got a really good formula with their quarterback system. And as long as they don't slip up with that formula, we're going to find out right now if we get a third potential Hall of Fame quarterback, which I'm not saying he is. I'm saying if the formula works, you had a Hall of Fame quarterback in Brett Favre, and then you flip around to a Hall of Fame quarterback in Aaron Rodgers who sat behind Brett Favre for three years. And now a very, very eerily similar situation. A lot less uh, angst, but it still was a very similar situation in having a... Um, in having Jordan Love sit behind a Hall of Fame quarterback for three years. And of course... They're not going to come out and be superstars right away, but with the knowledge that they gained from their Hall of Fame quarterback predecessors, the potential for them being great, you know, is right there. And that could be, for any team at this point, that could be a recipe or a formula or whatever you want to say to having those, uh, to having your quarterback system if you can. It's hard to do it. You got to, I mean... You have one quarterback that doesn't pan out, one bus quarterback, and it really screws the whole thing for you, and that could happen with the Packers right now. Uh, CJ Stroud and the Panthers. What's going to happen? I don't know. People are like, hey, you excited about the number one pick in the draft? And I'm like, not really, because it's going to be a quarterback, and you have no idea how that's going to translate to the NFL. Um, so that's my thought on that. Anyway, though, a lot of thoughts there. I'm a big Buffalo Bills fan, have been since the Jim Kelly era just love the team they're just a fan well and they're similar to the Packers the community I have a lot of respect for the Steelers because when the Packers played the Steelers in the Super Bowl uh any customers I talked to I used to do software engineering now I do managing software engineering but um for a team of software people anyway so everybody I talked to from that area after the game that found out where I had lived or where I lived or like no animosity against Packers or the Packer fans because they feel like the similarities between the two fan bases are so mu so great you know smaller area real blue collar hardworking all that stuff so anyway I have respect for them like I said a lot ooh, we got a full spinner there and a stop truck on the track is Dennis Setzer yikes caution flies that was crazy. Oh, we got another smoker on the track. Is that... Whoa, 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 whoa. We're fine. I went to go down. <laughs> and... We, we almost lost it at that speed. Anyway, uh, we got a... Ooh, how many laps do we have? Nine laps left on the tank. This is definitely a two-stop race. Can we get away with stopping now, though? Not a big fan of being in first place, but being behind all these trucks. See if I can get a round of going into the first turn. We did pit. We wanted to... Um, well, none of those trucks pit. That's why they're in front of us. Let's give me a second here to get around them all. And then... Ooh. We're going to jump low. Uh, Not clear low. Hoff is there, but we're going to hopefully be clear low right here. Well, no. That's look at it drives all the way down onto the freaking apron pushing me down. That was it was a clean shot to the side. I'm not actually mad about that part. And I came completely off the gas, so we weren't in fear of getting completely toasted there. But wow, that was less than wonderful. Doesn't give me a second here now that things have cleared up a bit i think yeah we didn't even get damaged i didn't think we would because he hit us so square on the side it was pretty impressive actually we're gonna go ahead and try to get up here without losing it so we can get around them around right here as they freaking cut the tri oval anyway quad oval is what they call it here that's what it is anyway i don't quite remember what i was talking about because for you guys it's been like what three seconds for me it's been like 10 minutes and i am horrible at that i know i was talking about football and all and I, the reason why i was talking about the sports was because all of these things are video games and they're all fun i um not to ugh, i hate to promote someone else's channel no just kidding i don't actually care at all to be honest with you please go watch these people they're great um not the expert is playing like little league 
World Series right now. Oh my goodness, is that entertaining? I found out that because I do want to get a PS5, but it's really not in the cards right now. I just, I wouldn't use it enough to justify it. And so I looked up though, and I found out that the show, MLB The Show, is on Xbox Game Pass, and I can play it on my PC. And so that would be a lot of fun to like go through a character career. Obviously, I talked about the football games. I won't do Madden on here anymore. I just flat out won't do it. I actually put in anybody who, which is likely nobody that's following me on here, but anybody who ever knew, I got my start on YouTube originally and had a fairly successful channel with a couple thousand subscribers. Um, and it was where I had modded Madden. When Madden had first came out, or not when it first came out, but when the ability to mod the modern Madden game came out, uh, got involved with the group. They were absolutely horrible. We're not willing to work with anybody. We're not willing to give any of the information out to help anybody else learn how to mod for themselves. So I did. I spent about six months learning with a couple other really cool people, learning how to mod the game. We had some major breakthroughs. And then at the time, which I have since deleted because I completely deleted that channel and any, any, um, association to my old channel just because of some of the shady stuff that happened from other people that were not liking what I was doing by sharing all this information. Um, they basically trashed my channel completely. I don't know what it's called, but it's where somebody opens your, um, opens your channel or opens a video and closes it, opens and closes it, and it destroys your average view time. And it's all about these things. Oh my goodness. Other caution. It's all about these things when you're doing, um, Oh wait, how many laps are left? 52, 20, I mean, we'd still have to pit again, but I was just thinking because if we pit now with this group, just get fuel and right sides, we would be able to only have to pit one more time. As it stands right now, we have to pit twice. So we're going to take this one pit. And then we'll finish talking about the other stuff afterward. We might not have speed ups in this one, guy. It might be a long episode. I I apologize, but you know we're talking here, right? Got to be quiet for a second. It's set. The race is going green. There's the green flag. Still there. I knew somebody was going to do that. I knew I was going to get done like that, so I Hold your line. pushed McDonald down, which, I mean, I don't think he really minded that much. Matter of fact, didn't mind it at all. Still there. Clear high. That's not the time to look at that. About to enter the quad oval, by the way. Ooh, ooh thank you for not running into me, sir. That would have sucked. Still there. Clear all right. Low. So anyway, while I catch these guys, um, that channel... Had that happen to it, and eventually I deleted everything and stepped away from all of it for a while, and then came back to this. The whole point to that is, um, when I consider doing like a sports game or something, I'm not sure I want to put it on a racing channel, because I know that that's what this channel is specifically about, in this genre, but I also don't want to have two YouTube channels where I have 40 subscribers, you know, 50 subscribers on each channel. I'd rather grow one community that enjoys it. Regardless, as I promised at the beginning of the um, at the beginning of the episode, I will have I will always have some form of racing series going on at the same time. But uh, with so many cool things happening, I can't just ignore the other games that are out there. And I love to share the experience with you guys. So that was that's why I don't want to have that be. The, um, sorry. <laughs> Trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that, and then do that, and then do this. Anyway, um, I'll always have some kind of racing game running on the channel. However, uh, we have 
about almost exactly half of the race left to go and i'm pretty much going to speed up most of the race you'll we'll stop for a caution or our next pit stop thank you for listening to my ted talk Caution flies. Not really sure for why, but uh, <laughs> we've got almost the whole field two laps down because everybody had to pit. I don't actually know at all why Matt Crafton pit again. He pit with me on the last stint. He was the only truck that was on the lead lap that pit with me. That's why we started where we did. So I'm really confused by that, but here we go. Uh, 30 laps to go. And that means we can pit and get our, because we won't pit until there's at least 29 left to go. And then we'll pit again because we want to have all the gas in the truck. We'll check it. I mean, if we get around two more times, I won't care. Or if we don't pit this time around. If we pit the second time around, I'll be fine with it. Otherwise, we'll actually pit again if it allows us to. Sometimes it does. We'll see. All right. According to my records, we have enough gas to get us through the end. There's the green flag. We're about to check that right now. 27. We have 26 laps left. We should be fine. We should be fine. We also have lapped everyone. <laughs> So there's that, and they were all in the left lane because I was the only car on the lead lap. So they're all stuck behind triple-digit trucks. Thus, nothing for you to see here, folks. We're just going to speed up, and we'll catch you with about three to go unless there's a caution beforehand. All right, guys, we're at the last lap. And uh, as you can tell by the relative or the leaderboard, but that would normally be the relative, letting you know how close or far you are away from anyone. We are not going to be able to lap Matt Crafton for the third time. He had just come out of the pit. That's how we got the second lap on him. 
he didn't pit with us. So your uh, pole winner finishes the race two laps down. We finish the race a minimum two laps ahead of everybody. The, uh, well, you know, whoa, I didn't, don't know why that happened. But anyway, we'll uh, look at the standings. Your top five, Tony Savoy leading the pack by a minimum of two laps and a maximum cars running 12 laps. We lapped 258, which I believe is the Tonka truck who we barely nicked. That's the only contact we had all day with another truck that actually caused any kind of damage to the truck. Anyway, uh, Matt Crafton, your pole sitter winner, ends up with the second place. Bobby Dodder, third place. Rick Crawford and Randy McDonald, fifth place. That is the money we're talking about, baby! $149,180. Oh, that's pretty nice. That's what happens when you do everything but we missed one, and that was pole. We missed the pole. By the way, the gold 10 on the side is that Perfect 10 Lotion sponsor. I put that on for this race, obviously, because we got them. Um, that sucks about the pole winning, missing out on that one. I think that's 10, 10 grand. Uh, Tony Savoy wins. Tony Savoy dazzled the crowd at Texas on June 5th and brought home the victory. Although Kerblam King has four top five finishes this season in the truck circuit, some fans are also... Well, shut up. Uh, shut up. With that victory, that puts us over 100 points ahead of second place, Crawford. Robert? Richard? Robert? Rick? Rick Crawford. Rick? I can't remember. Anyway, I think it's Rick Crawford. We'll look at the next qualifying. That's where it shows the full names. Anyway, Brennan gone. Third place right now. Just 18 points back from Crawford. John Wood, eight back from Gone. And Robert Presley, he is the big jump down at 51 points back from Wood. So there you have it. Looking pretty good right now. Our next race is at Kansas Speedway, 475,000 in that one. And we'll look to hopefully try to get our pole position and another victory we got to take everything we can right now because, again, and I will repeat this, and I hope people are still here to listen to it, next season will not be like this. The other trucks will catch up in talent and in equipment. I'm telling you, every year that I stay in the uh, Featherlight Modified Series, it just gets more difficult. I am barely winning races right now in that series. I'm still winning a bunch of them, and we are still in the lead overall. But it's not by much, and so I want you to know, come next season, the Truck Series races, although the, I'm pretty sure that the super speedways like Texas that we just ran and Daytona and all that, I'm pretty sure we'd still do well there, but the shorter tracks, you're going to see a lot closer racing, so stick around for that content, but hey, please do continue to support me during our dominating part of this uh, series, because... I do enjoy it, and I hope you are as well. That is going to do it for this episode, though, folks. As always, I want to take a moment out to say thank you so very much for you taking the time out of your day to watch my video. You can be watching other people. You can be doing anything else. But you guys come out, you catch my videos, and I really do appreciate it. And until next time, you take care. <laughs>